Good morning everyone and welcome, welcome to Forest Hill Methodist Church on this lovely Sunday morning. You're all very welcome. And this morning we're going to be led in worship by Joe. Sorry, I forgot you said. Joe. <laughs> by Joe. Joe, Joe. We're going to be led in worship this morning by Joe Karoma. And Joe, you're very welcome. Thank you. Good morning. morning. It's good to be here this morning and to lead this worship. I am on trial. It's getting on trial. (laughs) And this is the first day, or the first time I'm actually leading a worship on Trinity Sunday. It's very, very important for all of us. Thank God for that.
I've taken off my shoes. That's what I've been doing. And it's very, very important. Because today, it's not just Trinity Sunday, but it's the Sabbath day. The holy day. Now, if we remember what... Uh, Be still for the presence of the Lord, for the Holy One is here. That's why we come to church, to worship the Father. And today, Trinity Sunday, we have to be still, for he is here. He said to Moses, wherever I cause my name to be honored, I'll meet you there and bless you. We're not going to leave this place today without God's abundant blessings. 
Let us just worship him in truth and in spirit. And that truth actually comes out of our heart. The spirit, the spirit of God that he has actually given to us. He joined with our own spirit. We now have a prayer of approach. Or is Psalm 89, please. Ascribe to the Lord, you powers of heaven. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due to his name. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord breaks the seed of trees. The Lord breaks the seed of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf. The voice of the Lord splits the flash of lightning. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees reef and strips the forest bare. The Lord sits enthroned above the water flood. The Lord sits enthroned and speaks forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. Indeed, the Lord shall give us a blessing of peace, not just us, but his people all over the world, in all the churches around. Thank you, O Lord, for the granting us your blessing of peace and everlasting love. Amen. I didn't know that um, we are not going to be handed the Methodist worship book, but well, we are going to have a prayer of confession. I'll just pray the prayer of confession. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for bringing us here to worship you. Many times and always, we have departed from your commandments. We have sinned against you. We have sinned against our neighbors. We pray, O oh Lord, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy upon us and forgive us. Forgive us, O Lord, so that we will then serve you in newness by the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Then we will now have our readings. Please. The well, first reading is from Isaiah, the Old Testament, by Brenda Onatoki. Good morning, everyone. Um, this reading is from Isaiah chapter 6, and it's verse 1 to verse 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. He was sitting on his throne, high and exalted, and his robe filled the whole temple. Round him, Flaming creatures were standing, each of which had six wings. Each creature covered its face with two wings, and its body with two, and used the other two for flying. They were calling out to each other, Holy, Holy, 
holy. The Lord Almighty is holy. His glory fills the world. The sound of their voices made the foundation of the temple shake, and the temple itself was filled with smoke. I said, there is no hope for me. I am doomed because every word that passes my lips is sinful, and I live among a people whose every word is, simple, is sinful. And yet, with my own eyes, I have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the creatures flew down to me, carrying a burning coal that he had taken from the altar and a pair of tongues. He touched my lips with the burning coal and said, this has touched your lips and now your guilt is gone and your sins are forgiven. Then I heard the Lord say, whom shall I send? Who will be our messenger? I answered, I will go, send me. This is the word of the Lord. Our second reading, Romans 8, from Sophie no, C4 Maguni. Sorry. Good morning. We're going to be reading Romans chapter 8, verses 12 to 17. So then, my brothers, we have an obligation, but it is not to live as our human nature wants us to. For if you live according to your human nature, you are going to die. But if you live by the Spirit, you put to death your sinful actions, you will live. Those who are led by God's Spirit are sons, are God's sons. For the Spirit that God has given you does not make you slaves and cause you to be afraid. Instead, the Spirit makes you God's children, and by the Spirit's power we cry out to God, Father, my Father. God's Spirit joins himself to our spirits to declare that we are God's children. Since we are his children, we will possess the blessings he keeps for his people. And we will also possess with Christ what God has kept for him. For, for if we share Christ's sufferings, we will also share his glory. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you very much. We now have our gospel reading, John 3, by Brenda Renshaw. Thank you, Brenda. There was a Jewish leader named Nicodemus who belonged to the party of the Pharisees. One night, he went to Jesus and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you're a teacher sent by God. No one could perform the miracles you were doing unless God were with him. Jesus answered, I am telling you the truth. No one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How can a grown man be born again? Nicodemus asked. He certainly can't enter his mother's womb and be born a second time. I am telling you the truth, replied Jesus. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he's born of water and the Spirit. A person is born physically of human parents, but he is born spiritually of the Spirit. 
Do not be surprised because I tell you that you must all be born again. The wind blows wherever it wishes. You hear the sound it makes, but you don't know where it comes from or where it is going. And it's like that with everyone who is born of the Spirit. How can this be? asked Nicodemus. Jesus answered, You are a great teacher in Israel, and you don't know this. I am telling you the truth. We speak of what we know and report what we've seen, yet none of you is willing to accept our message. You do not believe me when I tell you about the things of this world. How will you ever believe me then when I tell you about the things of heaven? And no one has ever gone up to heaven except the Son of Man who came down from heaven. As Moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the desert, in the same way the Son of Man must be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God loved the world so much that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not die but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to be its judge, but to be its saviour. Thank you. Oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable, O oh Lord, to your sight, our Lord and Redeemer. Thank you, Father. Thank you. We've had three readings. This is not the first time we've had these readings. Uh, over 2,000 years ago, They've been reading and reading and reading. The word of God is continuing. He says, my word will not pass away. It will never, ever pass away. So we're here 2,000 years ago. Now we celebrated Pentecost last Sunday. And it's continuing today, Trinity Sunday. The first Sunday after Pentecost. It's very important. But it's not the only Trinity Day. In fact, every day is Trinity Day. Every day. For a believer, the Spirit of God, Christ Jesus, God, the, the Son of God, and God the Father, the Triune, they're all together. They are with us every day. Every day, once we are, we are believers. It's very, very important. So Trinity Day, unlike Christmas, when Christ was born once, unlike Easter Day, that we celebrate when he was raised from the dead, he resurrected, Trinity Day is not just once. It's every day, every day. So every day we have the Spirit with us. When we are willing for the Spirit, now, we heard from the readings, Isaiah, it strikes me. The first thing that Isaiah did in his vision, what happened to him? He saw the Lord. If we look at the reading carefully, he saw the Lord as God the Son. And then down further, further on to the reading, there is God the Father as well. But Isaiah confessed there and then that he is in sin. He is a sinner. That's the first thing that he did. He lived among sinners. His people are sinners. And, of course, his sins were taken away. He was forgiven. But then God asked, Who do I send? He could have said, I am sorry, or he couldn't even have answered. He could have said, I am sorry, I'm not going anywhere. Don't send me. Jonah did that. In the book of Jonah, we know that God asked Jonah to go to Nineveh. But then, of course, he refused. Although eventually he had to go there after he received some punishment from God. Put it this way. He had to go there. But Isaiah willingly said, send me. I am going, I will do it. 
That is about obedience, obeying God, but also doing it willingly. Perhaps Jonah would not have actually obeyed, he wouldn't have gone if God had not put him through uh, that adversity where he ended up in the belly of a fish. But as I said, send me, I am going. Well, this is about us, about obedience. Are we obeying God? That's a big question. If God says to any one of us, I am sending you uh, to some kind of uh, errand, and if we know, we don't know about the errand, are we going to say, yes, send us, we will go? As I said, I am going, send me. Because the Spirit was with him. God wanted him to go and do his work, to take his message for him, because we know God spoke through the prophets in the past until Jesus came. So he said, send me, I am going. But also he taught us about repentance. Repenting. When he said, I am a sinner. By just uttering that word, I am a sinner, God heard him, and then his sins were forgiven. That also teaches us about repentance. Now, the reading from Romans about the Apostle Paul, that again is very, very important for us. Because it starts with Paul ex Paul's exhortations, saying that we owe an obligation, we have an obligation to the Spirit of God. We have an obligation to the Spirit of God. That is very, very important. Isn't that good news? That we have an obligation to the Spirit of God. It's not always the time that we go down on our knees and we ask God, Father, give us blessings. Father, do this for us. Father, do that and say thank you and so forth. But we owe an obligation. And that obligation is what Isaiah demonstrated. The obligation to God to the Spirit of God, send me, I'm going to do it. I'm willing to do it. Paul did not list into details the obligations that we owe the Spirit. But if the Spirit dwells in us, he teaches us, he directs us, he guides us, he gives us life, then we must do something in return. And what does he want us to do in return? We have to do something in return. And what is it? It's about listening to him, hearing the word, and obeying him. God's own commandments. There are some commandments that are not on a tablet of stone, uh, Moses' law, and so forth. But we must remember what Jesus said. He said, I have not come to abolish the prophets or uh, the laws. If I have come to fulfill them. Jesus has come to fulfill the laws. And, and the law is this. That if we live in Jesus Christ, then of course we are fulfilling the law. We are obeying God. And in living in Jesus Christ, well, it's difficult. Very difficult. From the point of view of this earth, the world that we live in. But well, that is where the Spirit is helping us. When we come to the reading, John, Nicodemus, who is, who was in fact a, a Pharisee, a teacher, very vast in the laws, pays a visit to Jesus Christ at night. At night. Well, he was a Pharisee, and we all know what the atmosphere was, how the Pharisees, what they were trying to do to Jesus Christ. We all know. But he came there, or he went to Jesus that night for a particular purpose, 
And the discussion or conversation that took place between them was about being born again. That is Jesus' own message. Well, that did not just happen by accident. Because we know Jesus came down as God in the flesh of Jesus to help us, to teach us. So it did not happen by accident. Nicodemus was bound to be there that night that he went to see Jesus Christ. Because Jesus was supposed to deliver that message to be born again. And that's what he did. And could you imagine? He knew the laws. He is versed in the laws. But he did not know what it is to be born again. How many of us here really know what it is to be born again? The real meaning of it, to be born again. I did not know. And I did not know. At all. I did not know. I was baptized by water here in the UK at UCKG. And that was that. That was I knew about baptism. Because to be baptized by the Spirit is not something that is visible. We don't see it. And that is the, today's theme. Little did I know that I don't know what born again is. Little. I don't know it. But thank God, I know it now. So Jesus tells Nicodemus, he says, you have to be born again. If we are not born again, we cannot go to the kingdom of heaven. We cannot go to the kingdom of God. We have to be born again. And that born again is not just the spirit living in us. But we, it's about doing the things of the spirit, the things of God. That is what the born again is all about. Not just the spirit residing in us, but to ensure that we do what God does, what God wants for us, what Jesus Christ did when he was here, and when now that he is residing in each believer, what he does. That is what the born again is all about. That is what it's all about. Being born again, how I relate to my fellow human being, how I relate to a beggar out there on the street, how I relate to the homeless, but how I relate to myself, how I spend my time on my relationship with the Father. Our relationship, each one of us, how we relate to God. So this Trinity Sunday, when we acknowledge the Spirit of God in us, because He is here. God is here, Christ is here, and the Spirit of God is in each one of us. Uh, if we believe, if we really do believe that, because that's why in John 3.16, it's a common, very important verse, but it's very common. I learned it in primary school. I don't know how many of us. If you went to school uh, back home, we were made to, to uh, what we call, memorize it. To memorize it, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten his son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Because the Spirit gives life. That everlasting life, which the Spirit is working with us, in us, so that we will have, well, we haven't seen it. You don't just see it. But it's by believing from your heart. When we believe from the heart, truthfully, then, of course, we'll see that everlasting life. We'll get it. Now, as I was researching for today, I have had this book for a very long, over a very long period of time. It said the meaning of the warmed heart, and it's a Methodist uh, by Donald, by Doctor Donald English. Uh, he was a prominent, and he is a prominent person. I don't know whether he's still alive or not. But there is one 
particular sentence that I really want to uh, deal with this morning from this book. And this is about uh, John Wesley when he encountered God. And I'll just read this quickly. And it's a quote. His description of events. Uh, it says, I felt, this is John Wesley saying this, that is quoted here. I felt my heart strangely warmed. I felt my heart strangely warmed. Oh. I felt my heart strangely warmed. I felt I did trust in Christ. Christ alone for salvation. I felt my heart strangely, strangely warmed. I felt I did trust in Christ. Christ alone for salvation. And there are other people mentioned here as well, people of the Bible and so forth, who encountered the Spirit, just as John, John Wesley did, as described here. The warmed heart, the meaning of the warmed heart. Um, I'll just give a story about myself, how I came to be standing here and training to preach the word of God. I, my mother is a Christian. That's my mother sitting there. She's not learned. She is, she cannot read or write. Yeah, she cannot read or write. But her father, she explains to me, her father was a Christian. He did not read or write. But when the missionaries went to Sierra Leone, where I come from, um, in the interland, a small town, when they went there, they encountered her father. And uh, that's my granddad. And they, they encountered him, and then, of course, they befriended him, and they converted him. He became a Christian. And so he tried and got his children to be Christians, even though they cannot read or write. We don't need to write. This is about the heart. That's why I'm giving this story, about the heart. But she is a fervent Christian, uh, believing in God. We live together. Uh, she stays with me, and we pray together, and so forth. But it's the heart. We don't see eternal life, but the heart. And as I wish, I'm going to try to find uh, John Wesley's book so that I can read more about him. The strange, the strange heart, or the warmed heart, how your heart is. Now, my calling, I have actually explained my calling or narrated my calling to uh, few churches within the circuit. And today, Although, of course, I have actually uh, narrated it to, or shared it with uh, Reverend D when I was here, I have not shared it from the uh, altar to the congregation. But there is a message that I should deliver to the congregation. I had a dream. I was taken up, right up and suspended, well dressed up, suspended over an uh, like expanse of sea. No land, nothing, just sea. I was suspended up there. And then this cloud came, a patch of cloud, right above, over my forehead. And I was standing there. I was waiting, listening. I don't see if I'm going to get anyone, any voice. But no voice, no one spoke to me. I was there for some time and then I was brought back down here and placed before a, a huge building like a church and I walked majestically in front of the church. After that dream, I had another dream and the dream was that a Bible was given to me in my right hand 
the Bible was given to me and the voice that spoke to me said to me, don't let your heart part from the word of God. Don't let your lips part from the word of God. Don't let that happen. And pay your tithe. I should always pay my tithe. That was that. The third dream happened. When the third dream happened, it was a question. It says to me, have you explained your dreams to the congregation? I said, no, I haven't. And he says, you have to. You must explain your dream to the congregation. You must. Well, I have explained my dream to Lewisham, the church in Lewisham, Heather Green, Sunfields, Bontage, Elton Park, and I'm here today explaining that dream. The word of God. The word of God. That is the warmed heart. When, you're, when my heart or our heart is warm, we have that strange feeling, that feeling that John Wesley got the warmed heart and he believed in Christ straight away. And because he did that and he obeyed, that's why we are here. At the beginning of Methodism, isn't it? That's why we are here. Because he obeyed. That is why we are here. After that, this is a dream I have not explained to anyone. I have not even explained to my daughter. Although once I just said in passing, God wants all of us, all of his children, to go to heaven. And this is the first time I'm revealing this dream. I found myself in a very open space, green on a hill. And then I saw something like a vehicle up in the sky. And there is someone sitting in that vehicle. It's a white vehicle. This person was sitting in the vehicle. He was dressed in white, up to this part, because he was sitting it's only this side from the waist up, that I can see. He was in, dressed in white, and then the collar was red. And he was beckoning to me. Said, come, come to heaven. Come, come to heaven. And he started calling names for people to come to heaven. Eventually he said, all of you come to heaven. All of us to go to heaven. Well, this is the first time I'm explaining this dream. So that, I, I woke up and my eyes were filled with tears, tears of joy. Because what God has shown me is so important that nothing in this world would make me move away from the fact that there is heaven. And from the fact that we have to do something that God wants us to do in order for us to get to heaven. So bear that dream in mind that there is heaven. And that is what Jesus is talking about here, the kingdom of heaven. Oh, you have to be born again. Oh, you have to believe. And then be born again. And when we believe, we have to do what Jesus says we must do in Christ Jesus. Because he says, if, he says, the, if anyone, everyone who hears these words of mine, everyone who hears these words of mine, puts them into practice, they are like that wise man who built his house on a rock. The storm came, the winds blew, the streams rose. That storm battered that house, but it remained standing. The house remained standing. It did not fall. Unlike the man who hears the word of Jesus Christ, but did not put it in practice. 
They did not practice it. They departed from the world. They did not practice the world. They did not obey God. That man, according to Jesus Christ, is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. So he built his house on the sand and the foundation is not strong. But the, the wise man who built his house on the rock, the foundation was rigid, very strong. It doesn't matter what the, the power that the storm came with. The house remained standing. That is the word of God, obeying God, uh, uh, creating our own path for everlasting life, going to heaven. So when we are not born again, if we are not born again, then we will perish. But when we are born again, the spirit that God has given us to help us, that spirit will guide us, as Jesus says, in the truth of God. The spirit will guide us in God's own way. The spirit will guide us in the path of God. And there is nothing, nothing whatsoever that will hinder us, that will hinder our path for everlasting life. Nothing, nothing at all. If, if, if we remember, uh, in the beginning, in the beginning, they said the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. It was pitch dark. And then God spoke the word. And then creation happened. The universe, everything, and us, living creatures. From the Spirit, the word of God, by the Spirit of God. And it is that very Spirit, the Holy Spirit, that came upon Mary, uh, Jesus' mother. That Spirit that came upon her, that resulted in the birth of Jesus Christ. And it is that very Spirit that descended on Jesus Christ. When after John the Baptist baptized him with water. And if you remember, John the Baptist did not want to baptize Jesus Christ because he, he thought, he believed that he was not worthy to do that, to do so. But of course, Jesus said, no, you have to do it. You have to do it so that we complete righteousness. That is why he was saying to Nicodemus, we, we, you, we have to be we, we have to be born again. That is, baptized uh, not just by water, but also by the Spirit. Because after the baptism by John, the Spirit descended upon him. And then he went on and did wonders, miracles, and so forth. And it's that very Spirit that raised him from the dead. The very Spirit, the Spirit of the Father, that raised him from the dead. And it's that very Spirit that descended on the, his disciples. And they went on to do wonders as well. Whereas, uh, in, uh, in Acts, uh, all, all the disciples in Ephesus, even though they believed but they do not know about the Spirit. They have not received the Spirit. Uh, and therefore, they couldn't do as well and as much as uh, the Peter and the others. So the Spirit of God gives life. That's what Jesus says. And that's true. The Spirit of God gives us life. The Spirit of God gives us life. And that life is everlasting when we believe in the Lord. It is everlasting. So let us carry out our obligation, because that is the exhortation that the Apostle Paul was giving to us. He says, you have an obligation 
to the spirit, not to the flesh, not, not to the flesh, but to the spirit. And you know this flesh? We all know what happens about death. When some, well, well, I'm sorry, I know that uh, some of us, one way or the other, we have lost our loved ones. Of course, I lost my dad, I lost uh, my, my youngest, my, my great granddaughter, who was three months old, and I held her in my arms like that. I think she was hospital. She was so cold. But that is the flesh that Jesus Christ is referring to. This was an angel. That flesh. He says the flesh counts for nothing. The spirit gives life. That is why Jesus says, when you are born of the spirit, you go to heaven. Not just of flesh. Those that are born of flesh are of flesh. Those that are born of spirit are of spirit. And we are, as believers, as being born again, we are of the spirit. Uh, as Christians, we are of the spirit. And therefore, Paul is saying, go on and behave like spiritual beings, children of God, sons of God. Because Jesus is well, they, those that are born of the Spirit are of the Father. You are, we are children of God. And because we are children of God, of course, uh, we will inherit heaven. Children of God don't behave and act in a different way from God. He made us in his likeness. And on top of that, he has poured his Spirit on, upon us. Join it with our own spirit. Because God says, our hearts... And this is what the Spirit does for us. Our hearts are inclined to evil from childhood. That's what he identified in Genesis chapter 6 and chapter 8. Because wickedness was rampant in the world at that time. And he says this, my, my, my spirit will not contend with, uh, uh, with humans for long because we are mortals because we are humans that's what he said so he reduced our life on this earth for 120 years and he identified the problem there that the world this earth when we live here we are inclined our heart is inclined to evil from childhood. So we can see why he sent the Spirit, his Spirit, why he sent Jesus Christ as a matter of fact, why he came down. Because he came down in the flesh of Jesus Christ. Why he came down? Because he loves us. That's why he came down, and that's why he gave us his Spirit, so that we will live longer, we will have everlasting life, we will have peace, we will have his blessings. And it's because of those blessings, his blessings, that we are here today. Because we came here willingly, just like as Isaiah willingly accepted or offered to, to go on that errand. We are here willingly this morning to worship God. That's why we are here willingly. And God knows that. He sees us. And in any event, there is that blessing because we, come, we, come, we are here willingly. We already have a blessing. Uh, when Jesus delivered his sermon on the mount, he said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Because we are here willingly, that blessing is there. And that spirit, the spirit of God that is in us, will actually ensure that we have that blessing. Thank you very much. We have our next hymn, hymn number 11.
Spirit. Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty. prayers of intercession and this will be taken by a Sunderland. Thank you. Trinity Sunday and is a prayer of intercession and it's a response to the prayer. And I said, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The good news have been given, not just for us, but to pass on to the rest of the world. We have gathered here today in the company of the true God. Let us pray to him now. Lord, we ask for your blessing an anointing on all involved with ministry, outreach, both here and abroad, among children and adults, as they commit themselves to spreading the good news. Lord, in your mercy, hear. Almighty God, the nations rise and fall in the changes in the fortunes of nations, communities, and groups, we see our own experience writ large. With sadness, we acknowledge that the, sto the story of much of our history is of our victory, going to the strong and suffering, falling on the innocent and the weak, we pray for all who have influences and authority 
to their political standing, fame, and wealth. Speak into their hearts of righteousness and justice, integrity, and compassion. Lord, in your mercy, we pray that we may take seriously our responsibilities for nurturing our children and those who do not yet know God's love. Transform our living to reveal that love. Live in God. You hold your people within your loving care. No color, race, or gender curbs your graciousness. Time does not weary your love. There are no barriers, no boundaries to your kingdom, kindness. So we come with gratitude and thankfulness for your universe gifts. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. Father and Lord, when people seem to hate each other, give them greater understanding. When parents and children misunderstand each other, help them to listen to each other. When friendship is broken, show us how to mend it. When the church is fragmented, grant your healing touch. When nations are suspicious of each other, they learn a new humility of care. And Lord, since we ask these things for others, show us your love. We pray for that we may take seriously responsibility for nurturing. I said that once. <laughs> Father God, we lift up all those who are facing illness today. We ask that you bring healing, comfort, and peace to their bodies, calm their fears, and let them experience the healing power of your love. For we bring to mind members of Forest Hill Methodist Church who are recovering from operation. Val Dunton, Sylvia Wono, and the one who are housebound. We ask for your healing comfort. Show them, show these members with the blood of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. For the metaphysical death of those we know recalled be nothing less than the gateway to a new and lasting life in your love and protection. Lord, we thank you for the good news. We have received many. We be ready to share joy with others. Lord, we thank you for the ministers, the stewards, organists, pianists, who open the churches all over the world in this challenging year and months to let your people come to serve you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us all join to say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, 
for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Are there any notices at all? some piece of fabric on the tables in the reading room um, if anybody's interested and what would like to make donation to well needed church funds please um, suggest perhaps a pound to 150 per meter length or something like that lovely thank you Good morning, church. Thank you, Brenda, for that. Um, I'd like to thank Joe for preaching, leading us today in worship. I'd like to thank John for music, John Glover for all our technical needs, um, the choir, who were really excellent today, all of you, really good. Bonnie for the flowers. I'd like to welcome back everyone who hasn't been recently for whatever reason. Um, next week's service will be led by Reverend Charles and I know we haven't had a chance to celebrate our um, church anniversary but we hope to have gift aid envelopes available next week um, hopefully um, I'm going to speak to Margaret and we should be able to do that so that you can donate as you feel I think that's it actually I don't have anything else thank you On, uh, the, on the way out, we can give our offer of a tree out there. Uh, uh, we have our closing hymn, 550, yes, singing the faith. To God be the glory, great things he has done. So love he the world that he gave us his son. And his spirit, actually. Well, amen.
Thank you. Can we stand up, please, if you're able to? I will pray. The spirit of truth lead us into all truth. Give us grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and to proclaim the word and works of God, Spirit, Son, and Father. Remain with us always. We go into the world and the power of the Spirit to fulfill our high calling as servants and children of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you.